Wapiton traffic, Mustang 61429, departing runway 15 Wapiton. Initially got involved in doing filmmaking by going to Wright State University, which had a great theater arts program, and then uh, attached to it was a, a pretty good motion picture program, and grew up through that. And while I was there, the nice thing about Wright State is it sort of encouraged their student body to go out into the world while still in school and do freelancing. So uh, the alumni would work on undergrads' productions, so you weren't just learning from the students, but you were learning from... Uh, uh, the undergrads that are, and the graduate students that were already out there and learning how to gaff from working grip and electric people uh, that were down at, at the time HDR or whatever and uh, uh, grew from there and started working in the industry. Uh, it was a nice transition where other people were leaving college and go going, what do I do? When I left college I was already working, which was nice. Mostly uh, the emphasis uh, through Wright State that I was doing was uh, cinematography and lighting and that's sort of how I grew up and still maintain I've been on everything when I was at school actually the larger jobs I was on I was working on special effects with the Lombardis who did Con Air and way back in the day Apocalypse Now uh, so it was an amazing summer of doing earth wind and fire effects on set and blowing things up and then I came back finished school and then maintained the route going through cinematography and ultimately got trained in Steadicam. The, in getting trained in the Steadicam, the Steadicam is a camera system that involves a harness, a vest, an arm, and it uh, suspends the camera away from the operator's body uh, so you can do walking, running uh, shots and have it be smooth. And It was invented in the late 70s by Garrett Brown, uh, used for the first time in The Shining for great hedge maze uh, sequences and then is used on every motion picture uh, and major television show out there now uh, to give it much more of a glossy look with a faster pace. ER is a prime example of a show that was used uh, heavy steady cam during it. In working through production companies in Cleveland I was able to direct a, a little bit of like some real estate programs and a couple of commercials, things like that. Uh, it was about 10 years ago that I started getting involved in aviation. And the first film that I did was called The Restorers uh, in 2002. Uh, and that was a one hour documentary about people who, nationwide, who restore old warbirds and vintage aircraft. When you hear these engines start, just the engine start alone is incredible. It's like actually bringing something to life. I directed and produced it myself, uh, fundraising along the way. And I had never made it outside of college. I had never made a documentary before, much less one uh, with an enormous amount of travel. Uh, and about aviation uh, and the material that we were doing uh, I had learned enough that I had no reputation going into that so in the fundraising aspect of it I could not rely on my name as it so it was decided early on by myself to shoot it on motion picture film rather than HD and just let the work stand for it so when I would approach somebody for some fundraising uh, I said don't look at me look at the work and it's not a documentary about you know marbles or anything. It's a opportunity that you can get up at dawn and shoot some pretty sexy material of uh, old P-51 fighters cranking up with the sun coming up over them. You got some chance to actually do some damage. And that was the first film that I did and eventually it got on PBS Nationwide. While we were shooting the restorers, uh, there was a P-51 Mustang that landed at the airport we were filming at and we met those folks and it was a red tail Mustang. Uh, and the red tails were the, that was the painted signature uh, of the paint scheme on their P-51 Mustangs for the Tuskegee Airmen, the first black fighter pilots in the U.S. arsenal. And 
that program, as we got to know them more, uh, it dawned on us more and more that uh, that might be an opportunity to do a story. And that uh, inevitably led to me doing Red Tail Reborn in 2007, which was a story of the Tuskegee Airmen, as well as the story of this program um, that has de dedicated money, time, and a, one of their lives trying to tell the story of the Tuskegee Airmen. When we did the restorers, uh, it's broadly about people who restore old aircraft. The Just by sheer numbers, uh, World War II airplanes uh, outnumber most everything else out there just because so many of them were made. And it's sort of at the pinnacle of technology where moderately ordinary people can still work on it and get a grasp of it uh, uh, where it's advanced versions of working on an old car or pistons and spark plugs and cylinders and all that. Once you get into the Korean conflict and into Vietnam with jet engines, it's while there's still a lot of aircraft out there, it's harder for ordinary citizens to start working on that. What do you want to be when you grow up? An astronaut. It's <laughs> cute, huh? Not likely. You gotta be somebody. Or know somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Normal people don't get to do these things. It doesn't have to be like that. There were a group of Americans, not very long ago, that were told they wouldn't, that they couldn't amount to much in life. We're working on three films at the same time right now. The largest project that we were doing is for the Red Tail Project, and it's called Rise Above. And it has a particular subset of very hard technical difficulty technical problems that we had to deal with. Uh, it is a mobile IMAX theater that they are building within a 40-foot semi uh, that expands out. When it, it'll come to a school or to an air show, expand out, and on the inside of it is a 170-degree curved uh, screen that is 8 feet by 48 feet that curves around the viewers. And the education comes from teaching kids and the viewers to rise above whatever situation you may be in, using a Tuskegee Airmen as an example of them rising above adversity. And at the end of the film is a 10 minute flying sequence that we shot with uh, a 180 degree lens to put the viewer in, the in a Mustang formation with the red tail Mustang, uh, which we just got done uh, shoot editing. We shot it last for three months, uh, sent it for processing, it has to be digitally something by the people who are building the theater. Uh, we kicked it out the door two days ago. I guess the reason that I got into film would be one of the reasons why I initially did the first Restorers film. That I had always grown up and been interested in airplanes and go going to the Cleveland Air Show and hearing the jet teams. And then after college I went and started going to older air shows and seeing B-17s and P-51 Mustangs all dragged out and flown in front of the crowd. And people were looking at these, and I had personally watched a lot of PBS and the History Channel, and I didn't know the stories that were coming out about these Mustangs. And what, do, what does the crowd think? Where do they think that these came from? That they were pulled out of a barn and oiled up a little bit? Uh, that there is an enormous story that was about that, that were associated with those airplanes. And that the fun for me would be able to, in a dramatic, informative way, talk about the stories of those airplanes and by virtue of their of telling those stories tell the stories of the people involved to tell the stories of uh, the humans that were associated with the planes because airplanes are just pieces of titanium steel and aluminum but what they're able to do is facilitate a much greater story of all of the people that flew them and designed them which is uh, the fun in it for me to be able to relay the stories uh, and, and the experiences that I have meeting these people to be able to tell those stories to a much greater audience, and that's the fun in it for me. Frame Lines is brought to you in part by Zabo Lights, the new LED lights for your production. Tape Central, providing your media needs. Production Partners Media, affordable media solutions.